Well, hello everyone, Dylan here with a LEGO Star Wars Summer 2021 review, and this one is on the Imperial Light Cruiser, the biggest one of this way, of course. And on the front of the box here have the logos, of course, that interesting border with Mando ind indicating that it's a Mandalorian set, picture of the set flying up in action with some quite nice artwork behind it, and all the main things included, Disney logo, and... Recommended ages 10 and up, set number 75315, has 1,336 pieces. And on the back of which, you see it in an arresting position on Offworld, Battle of the Figs going on, and also all the features of it. And Lego.com, and also the logos and set number again. And now onto the booklet, which same picture as on the front of the box and everything, very thick of course. And on the back is how to win on the online survey. And the pieces that come with the set, of which three pages. And after the Skywalker Saga game. And then after the minifig list, or all the figs that come in this current wave of sets of course. And then after some current and recent Mandalorian sets, of course. And then the last building steps. Well, first of all, so now on to the fixes. That first off, we get we get Mando, of which same as from a couple other sets earlier in the wave, in this wave, and just like also in this wave, or this year obviously, and also in this wave, also holding the spear of course, and also same everything, and plain black headpiece still, which they still need to do, put on a face print, no need to, to use that, because already did a face reveal, yeah, and then have Baby Yoda, or otherwise Grogu, of which making his uh, fourth appearance in a set, of course, and Cara Dune, second ever appearance in this set. Uh, not sure why I included that, but whatever. But these three of which quite getting quite repetitive, but of course had to have Mando in it, of course, since he's like the Harry Potter of the Mandalorian sets, of course. Then besides that, but the three exclusive that we do want for this set. Uh, which being first time of Moff Gideon, and, uh, and then who of course does have some good torso printing there, and not at all any leg printing, being kind of weird, but whatever. And also the cape piece, which has some red in the fr in the front and black behind, uh, which very nice, uh, which good, which we don't see very much, and and of course wielding the dark saber. And like I and a lot of people of uh, which have said. That this of which same as since twenty uh, twelve and thirteen, and they still have never updated it. That as of now, these if Lego if they're if you're watching, please make an all new piece for the dark saber because if you look at it in all the shows, it is quite specifically shaped. And same with the hilt as well. But besides that, Moff Gideon alone still done quite goodly and also get dark trooper and this is the only one that you get in this one thought that they would have made it specifically like the uh, super battle droids but no but actually regular minifig pieces do work out well for it and same shoulder blade piece that uh, uh, wrecker in the uh, bad bat shuttle set also had but also with some nice prints to it and in the front lift the helmet piece off, which done pretty well, but it sculpted well, of course. And of course, it's the face print of which with the red visor kind of thing to it, which I think would be nice, which could work out well in some, like, uh, space theme mocks. Okay, then. <coughs> and then... Also important is, of course, 
first time of Fennec Shand. And, and the Torso Print and Leg Print's done pretty well, and the same weapon that Kara Dune also has, but although if you see her in most of the show, she does get plenty of other kind of weapons. And, and whereas for her helmet piece, which the molding done pretty well, like as you see it's molded in orange and then painted black, of course, and face prints are done quite goodly, and whoops, also. Also, they could have included a hair piece that would also make her a bit more accurate to the show, of course. And also, he, on, same with Mando, the only figs in the set with some side arm printing, which of course is getting more common in this current wave, of course. I hope they continue that in the future, but yeah. And as with Moth Gideon and Kara Doom, which both also have uh, double side faces, and they're done quite well. And with her, with Fennec Shan's back torso print, also done well. And Moth Gideon's, which also done quite superbly. Or it's gone, of course, but yeah. Which, good selection of figs, although I think also could have included young Luke Skywalker, of course. Well, maybe it's, you know, representing to that of the last bit of season two, of course, and yeah. Or also another dark trooper, which also would have been nice, but yeah, whatever. And now on to the Imperial Light Cruiser itself. You see, it which is a really cool little build to it. And also something with an all new different shape to it. Well, although build of which is kind of similar to most uh, uh, Star Destroyers and things, things that we got. But the back part of which all quite different and all. But besides that, if you look from the front part of it, which has the whips, shaping of which done similarly to. All the other uh, Star Destroyers, but, but of course with an open end to it, like it of course has in the show, obviously. And of course a couple of turrets on the side, and also, if you notice that little dark brown rod in it, well, there's a reason for that, which I'll go over later. And for this upper area, which has a couple of turrets that rotate around and also have these spring launchers in them that fire quite well. You can see some good greebles down the sides of it, and also with these little things off that jet out the side, of course. And this little uh, wheel bit in it, which is kind of similar to that of like the 2012 Malevolence, but in, but it doesn't shoot anything, of course. But besides that, it's kind of nice to have here, and also kind of interesting use of pieces around here, obviously. And the far back part, which done pretty well, and I see a little hitting place with for a mini TIE Fire, which the builds of this build of which does look kind of similar to that of like something you get in an advent calendar of course and it's attached to a single stud in there of course and you see quite good design down here for that and a couple of jagged slopes for that perfect symmetry this is that and as for the back part of which, done with a couple of those big large cylinder pieces and also actually three of them, kind of a bit like the Imperial and Star Destroyer sets both did. It, but at least it's built a little bit differently than those. And as for the this front upper area, which may be a little hard to do in like minifig scale, but of course a little too out of minifig scale for it, but, but besides that, built pretty well, but I thought there would be some in good interior space in this area, but no, just for structure, but 
which we'll go over in a sec. But, it, but besides that, is it has it acts as a nice sturdy hand, making it good to swoosh around the course. But of course, a handle that's like integrated into the build, rather than like pull on out and pull and all, which I think is quite nice. So, and of course, not getting in the way of the whole look of it. But yeah, and if you look at the cheese slopes right here where you can pull these pull this all right up and you got this whole interior space which as you see have a couple of jagged slopes and a, a acting as the table and of course do get red coffee cup there like they usually do with various star destroyers and also extra shot for the spring little launchers of course and also do get a couple of crates because this one with the like scoping kind of things in it. And then the other one of which, which has a pair of thermal detonators, of course. And as I take the mini TIE fighter from earlier, and if I push this back. Here, or put it in there, of course. So I push this, and it launches right out, which I think a good, fun feature to it. You know, it may not be shoot out quite powerfully, but it works quite fine. But also, whereas for some of the other jagged slopes in this, of which are all stickers, so. But luckily, very few stickers in this set, and also, so this the upper window area also all stickers, but they're livable. And so now on to the final verdict. So overall, this I think a really cool set. To which so get playing good playability and also this vehicle uh, which has been uh, which all new to add to the catalog of course and but also this not just in the Mandalorian but did also appear in Star Wars Rebels of course. Although you can kinda of modify it to look that way of course. <laughs> Or at least throw in Sabine and Ezra and whatnot. But as for the minifig selection, which, which I'll say once again, is great to include Moff Gideon and Fennec Shand and Shout Dark Trooper. Although it would have been nice if there were more than one Dark Trooper, but maybe they'll come in other sets down the line. But yeah, but as the build of which all new and quite unique and all. But although the top half of it opening part of which kind of similar to the 2009 Venator but at least that can work perfectly for if there was a new design for the Venator and yeah uh, and besides that some of the features of which can also work with a new version of the Venator as well as Sith Star Destroyer from Rise of Skywalker also yeah and if you're looking to and if you're looking to get this set for your Mandalorian collection Definitely pick this up, and if you have the money or play enough money to get this set, also definitely pick this up. And that's about it with this video. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.